Welcome our dear viewer to the show The Bible Journey. I want to welcome you in a very special way to our discussion today as we continue studying uh, the book of Genesis. Remember that we are going through the chapters one chapter uh, one, uh, one chapter per time. And uh, today of course we are moving on to the book of Genesis chapter 11 and we want to get what God is communicating to us through this particular chapter. And of course with me on set today are my special panelists uh, starting with our resident pastor, Pastor Gerald Nyerega. Welcome to the show Pastor. Thanks for having me. Yeah and of course next to him is our brother Roland Migok. Welcome. Hello viewers. Next, again, is our brother Eric Ongaro. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. And uh, next to me here, just uh, uh, Jacent, is uh, our brother once again, George Reru. Welcome. Thank you. And of course, remember that you can get into this discussion, ask your question, give your comment by uh, finding our social media platforms. Facebook page is Hope Channel Kenya. Uh, like the page and write whatever you want there in terms of comments and questions. And also on Twitter, you can tweet to us on at Hope underscore Kenya. And of course, before we begin, we get a word of prayer from our brother uh, Kiche. Uh, no, no, Roland uh, Migok. Okay, let us pray. Our kind and loving Father, we ask you to be with us and protect us. Put your words into our mouth and may you help us so that we can communicate effectively what it is that you want us to communicate. For this is my humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you very much. And uh, if last time we were here, of course, I remember Reru was in the, on the set, and uh, we were discussing about the book of Genesis, chapter 10. And, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, there, there is a whole lot of lineage being explained to us about the sons of Noah, uh, that is uh, Japheth, Ham, and Shem. And we got to really learn quite extensively on what God was communicating to us there. And, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, we came to learn that actually we come from these three sons. That is how the world was spread over time. And then now as we move to Genesis chapter 11, which is our chapter of discussion today, we have a sort of a new thing coming on board uh, because there is an element of confusion being introduced here, if you can look at it keenly, Pastor, there, there is an element of confusion right from verse 1 up to verse, uh, uh, verse, verse 9 is confusion. And maybe just to start this discussion, in verse 1, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Mm. I'm trying to imagine about that time when the whole world would speak one language. They were just one, when you speak, a person would hear what you are talking about. It doesn't matter whether they are from the other side of the earth or from this other side, they would hear each other. Comparing that with what we have today, we have so many languages. You know, we have races, within those races we have uh, communities and these tribes and people don't understand each other. Take for example Kenya. We have uh, more than 43 tribes in this particular nation. When you compare these two, what comes to your mind? What, uh, what really comes into your mind when you look at that? Rero? <coughs> okay, what comes to mind when I think about Kenya and it's uh, very many, over 40 uh, languages and uh, tribes. Um, there's some um, sort of disparity, but even with this disparity, we all, we all are Kenyan, so there's still that aspect of disparity, but unity in that disparity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. W would we prefer, uh, Ngaro, would yes. you prefer, like, currently to have a, a world of a one uh, sp uh, one language speaking people or do you, would you prefer it the way it is right now with a mix of all these tribes? Okay, they say if you were to choose. Okay, they say diversity is good in unity but again going to this verse 1 of chapter 11 I would prefer that uh, I wish that we speak one language it will be more perfect there will be no division actually when you speak, I understand, I speak, you understand. There's no uh, thing that is so beautiful when we can speak, communicate, and understand one another. Mm -hmm. 
Uh -huh. and, and Roland, because we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where I believe we'll have one language to speak. Hmm? Does that inspire you to say that, to agree with the, the panelists here that they would prefer a one language speaking people or do you still stick to, you know, the beauty in diversity? Absolutely. Um, it will be a lovely scenario. Mm -hmm. And um, indeed, I'm impressed to look at um, um, the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 6, mm -hmm. where we see... Um, if I can just try it. Mm. Acts chapter 2 verse 6. Yeah. Okay. Acts 2 verse 6, we see that um, the outpouring of the Spirit. Where we see that, um, I'll read. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. So we see that one long, uh, there, was, there was this gift that um, one language was, be, was able to, to, uh, to be able to communicate to other people. And that is how um, the outpouring of the Spirit was more effective according to God's will. So um, if I was to imagine the day that um, Jesus will come and you are able to speak in one language. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I can imagine that um, it will be a good scenario and it will be um, uh, something that I could, um, I would anticipate to actually see and talk to a Kenyan, talk to a different, uh, maybe a Sudanese or a different country, all, but all the same, we are communicating on the same page. Wow, wow, yeah. wow. And, and Pastor, you know, when we get to verse 2 and verse 3, uh, that is where now we get that it's, uh, you know, people were having a one language to speak. It's like a one mind people, people who could discuss and agree on some things and move forward together. And they have a discussion here, and I, it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shina, and they dwelt there. Verse 3, and they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for, for stone and slime they had for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us bring, uh, build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we should be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Now, a one sp uh, language speaking people are in a discussion, and they say, You know, I think this is motivated by what happened during the time of Noah. It has just happened some, some time ago mm -hmm. where there was a flood yeah. and they, they, they said uh, if, if something of that nature repeats itself again, we may be scattered abroad. What comes into your mind of, about that, what they are discussing here and of course we'll get a discussion on God going on. All right. Um, thank you once again. I want to build up from what my, my panelists have also, have also said, mm -hmm. that uh, there is an element of unity just as you begin seeing the aspect of this language that has brought you know the human race together mm -hmm. and uh, as, as the element of unity has its positive and negative aspects the positive aspect is that the togetherness of people and it's helping them to do things together but because the inclination of man is towards evil just as we had read in the previous chapters yeah the evil nature is, is you know, it's, it's, it's showing itself up. And so unity can be used positively in the element of this one language, but at the same time it can be used negatively. And in this aspect, the nature of evil is coming in and is bringing that negative aspect. Like today, say for example, we have uh, different language groups, just as, as you've, you've rightly said, mm -hmm. in our country. And uh, we normally see people trying to say that this, has, this is my group, my people, just so because we want to be against that group and that kind of a people. Mm -hmm. So this unity of language can be used positively or negatively. And in this aspect, when it was coming up, it was actually revealing the very nature before, like that which had happened in heaven through Lucifer where he also wanted, this is one way, just like Lucifer wanted to ascend to the highest mm -hmm. and to the throne of God, yeah. the very nature is being revealed mm. here, also. here too, because mm -hmm. they want to ascend unto the highest and even to where 
God is. Mm -hmm. And God looks at these human beings and we, the ones he has created and he pities them mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. because of what they are trying to, as we will continue to discuss. Yes. And Pastor, you're bringing in something very, very crucial here that unity can be positive, can be used in a positive way yes. and in a negative way. Mm -hmm. So it, it's upon me as an individual to decide how I'm using unity because look, look at Kenya, I, I think this is very crucial to, mm -hmm. to mention, it's very important. Mm -hmm. Like we as Kenyans, uh, we, uh, we, can, we, we belong to certain tribes and communities mm. and there is a way that we can use that in a very positive way mm. and there is also a way that you can use that in a very negative way mm. when you come together in tribal cocoons and be against that other tribe mm. but if we celebrate our own traditions mm. if we celebrate our of course the positive ones celebrate our own uh, you know virtues in the society in our tribes that would be positive I think and mm. maybe the, the message that uh, we would get from that, right from what we are talking about, would be what in terms of uh, communicating to Kenyans. How, how would that help us in using that unit in a positive way? Okay. When you go back to the scriptures, the same chapter we are on, chapter 11, Genesis, mm -hmm. yeah. um, we find in verse 3 there we are told that then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. Uh, they had brick for stone and they had Slime. that for mortar. Mm -hmm. yeah, so when we have one language and uh, we have one speech, like uh, the, verse, uh, the chapter begins to say, there is that aspect of being able to accomplish things. There is that capacity to be able to do stuff together. So that um, when we are one and uh, with one language, it is easier for people to cooperate. Mm -hmm. Cooperation now gets... Uh, uh, smooth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and now that and now that uh, of course we don't have one language anymore, mm -hmm. that is something that we can only aspire to have in the new heaven and the new earth, mm -hmm. where we'll speak all a common language. Mm -hmm. But now that we have this 43 plus, you know, uh, tribes in mm -hmm. this country, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, maybe this I direct it to Migok there. Mm -hmm. How do we use it in a positive way? Because at the end of the day. There's nothing much we can do about the tribe you belong to. Uh, that changing it or maybe doing something to become one tribe. There's nothing much we can do about that. Mm -hmm. But there is something that we can do to br bring that community together and at the end of the day also bring Kenya as a country together and Africa as a continent together mm -hmm. in a positive way, to unite in a positive way mm -hmm. instead of the negative that we are seeing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Thanks a lot for that question. Um, one thing I must say is, um, uh, just like uh, we've uh, we've heard from our pastor, is the intention was not good. It was not according to God's will. Mm -hmm. And if we look at um, Kenya as a whole, and even Africa in its mm -hmm. um, entirety, yeah. then um, what will be ideal for us is to come together and surrender our will to the Lord so that we are able to get direction from one point. Our focal point becomes God yeah. and um, in that manner we are able to have a general direction towards um, moving forward mm -hmm. even as to the things that we do. Wow, wow. Yeah. thank you very much. And, and Pastor, I think, the, the, I don't know if uh, these people are fearing to bring it out. <laughs> 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 no, because so I was uh, just about to ask a question. Yes, okay. Uh, and so Go ahead. To understand these verses. Yes. Uh, to understand the power of language. Does it mean that uh, in, in our tribals is the, 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 the power of language that control us, that make us build our tribe, this tribe A, that is tribe B? Is it because power of the language? I mean, what's the language in this tribal thing that we talk about? Because when we know that when you go to heaven, mm. we'll be one tribe. Yeah. God, Jesus Christ or God will not go and address uh, one tribe there and then come and address mm. these people. Yeah. We'll be speaking to everybody there. So in here, as we talk, waiting the new heaven to come, does it mean that the power of language is what organizes all men to be in tribes? Indeed, yeah. it is a character, if yeah. you can allow me to uh, uh, interject. Okay. Um, Usually, if, for example, you come from tribe A and I come from tribe B, mm. what does it mean? I will believe in the tribe that I am in. And 
it is a natural course inclination that is taken by someone that the tribe that you come from is more superior than the other. Same applies to culture and same applies to other societal behaviors. Yeah, so that you believe in one aspect of things because you are cal inculcated to believe in a certain way of doing things. Yeah. So in my view, yes, um, it is also true that people also believe in the power of uh, language. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and, and, and Let me just say one thing. Okay. Um, there's something that we've got to differentiate. Sure. The, the, the difference between um, language as a means of communication, communication. Mm -hmm. and later on it building into different ethnic groups. Now, which, which, which began first? Is it ethnic groups or language i think it's language language so that's that's what we've got to differentiate mm -hmm. so then we've got to make uh this uh be understood mm -hmm. that when language was one from the very beginning it, it 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 was a means of communication to just make men you know move on mm -hmm. in the purpose by which god had created mm -hmm. and there is there is a school of thought, biblical school of thought of some scholars who mm -hmm. try to say that this is an evil thing that originated from God. Definitely Can not. something evil come out of God? That's exactly what I want to go to. Because again, <laughs> you know, as we continue with these, uh, sh uh, these sessions, uh, in the, the, the TV programs, mm -hmm. I am sure such a question could come later in our, you know, when our viewers mm -hmm. try to ask, did sure. this evil originate? But mm -hmm. I want to just go ahead and say, this was an evil per se mm -hmm. that originated from God. And the way in which God brought it, was just to take away the evil that had originated from their wrong use of that oneness of their language. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And that is why he brings this aspect of the different language groups. And by the way, for you to know that it wasn't evil per se, Jesus Christ wouldn't have come then from heaven and participated in one of these language groups, which was evil. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't have. He would have actually come with a language from heaven. A new language. A new language altogether. Uh -huh. But he now joins together with one. He, he spoke Aramaic. He was a Jew. And, bec and, and, and a bit of Hebrew. <coughs> and because of that, we, we get to realize that there is now that positive aspect of the different languages as means of communication that can still bring us together. together. Mm -hmm. mm. Now, the ethnic groups, which is a different aspect altogether mm. and which brings about these cultures, is another thing altogether that again makes humanity uh, either, you know, we, we in our different cultures, God appreciates it. Mm -hmm. So we can also use our cultures positively, just as language can, and also negatively. Mm -hmm. It is said, since Christ was also born in a particular culture, he appreciated that humanity is in that particular culture, mm -hmm. in that particular language group. And because of that, it is to be understood then that culture which does not go contrary to the principles of God. Means of communication, which is language, that does not go contrary to the principles of God mm. is good. Sure. Mm. Up to about the time when God shall restore us. And uh, I, I don't want to go towards the end, but it's good to bring it to this point that mm. God will actually restore us because he sees these negative elements that still exist in language and the negative ex elements that exist in culture which he shall eradicate but it's only him who will do so not yeah, not yeah, man and that's why yeah. we talk about being united mm. being peaceful mm. in our, in, in mm. our cultures but we can't sure. make it because we don't understand the purpose by which god had to mm. bring about these cultures and this language as they were yeah and mm. pastor you really speak to my mind because i'm this kind of a person who really wants to appreciate where i come from mm. the african that i am i'm really proud of uh, the african cultures i try to celebrate all of them i want to know what the 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 kikuyus believe in and uh, the food that they eat and uh, you know what they do and don't do i want to see the the luyas i want to see the the kalinjins all that i really see 
you know, it's quite interesting. I, I'm really proud of it. But at the same time, I'm really sad when it comes to a point where we want to fight each other mm -hmm. uh, just because I belong to this tribe A and you belong to this tribe B. Now we can't agree and we can't sit and have a conversation, a healthy conversation like we are having li right now. Yeah. You know, it now pains me at that point. Now I'm, I get confused. Should I really appreciate uh, the fact that we are uh, many languages, many tribes, or should I really be sad about it? But what you're saying is uh, really, you know, it really motivates me to, mm -hmm. to think on that. And now, mm -hmm. when you move to, to verse 5, mm -hmm. and the Lord, especially from verse 5, I think, up to 8, and the Lord came down to see the city mm -hmm. and the tower which the children of men builded. Mm -hmm. Six, and the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and mm -hmm. they have all one language. Mm -hmm. And they uh, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, mm -hmm. and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. Mm -hmm. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon mm -hmm. the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the yes. city. Mm -hmm. First question mm -hmm. is, uh, verse 5, go to, let us go down and see the city and the tower. Where was God when they were starting to even have the foundation? I, I mean, uh, th 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 that question will limit God because God, God yeah, is because omnipresent. Omnipresent, o of everywhere, omnipresent. at all times. Mm. But there is the dwelling place of God, mm. which of course we believe, we know that is heaven as the Bible records. Mm -hmm. And when they are saying, let us go down, he's only trying to indicate that let's be closer to them, all right, and now uh, see what it is that they are doing. And just like it's from the Genesis, the beginnings, when we went to the Garden of Eden, you know, uh, you see God saying, uh, Adam, where are you? As if he's so far away, mm -hmm. it is actually with them. Mm -hmm. And then he reveals himself where they are. He actually comes to mingle together with them. Mm -hmm. In like a manner, in Genesis chapter 11, when he says, let us come down, he's only trying to say, let's mingle with them mm -hmm. so that now we can see what it is that they are doing. Now, mm -hmm. you've got to understand those three verses that you've read. Mm -hmm. The motive of men and the intent of God. The motive of men in building the tower was evil. The intent of God to bring down, to come down and, you know, confuse Mix their, their language, language was for their good. To make them not fall into the evil that they had what? Mm. That they had in mind. Mm -hmm. So that's what has got to be seen in those particular verses that we have read. So God was still mm -hmm. there. He was seeing everything happening. Oh, sure. Oh, yes. Yeah, and oh, yes. uh, he allowed it to some extent, but then he thought, no, these people, that they will get into uh, destruction. Let me go and do something good for them, and he confounded their languages. Yeah. When you look at those verses, why do they want to be in one particular place? Why do they want to go to heaven? Are they trying to get away from the plan of God? Are they trying to, to get out of the purpose of humanity, mm -hmm. the plan of salvation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you realize they say this, yeah. that we will be scattered unto the very ends of the earth. We just want to stay where we are. Mm -hmm. In other words, they, try, they have already known the plan of God. Is that the humanity has got to go all over mm -hmm. and be everywhere mm -hmm. and be a blessing because they were to till the land. They, mm -hmm. were, they were to dress it. Mm -hmm. But here they are. They just want to be there. Or was it out of fear and uh, they thought that, uh, you know, we still want to adventure and discover new places and all this. But then let's have a tower that is so high mm -hmm. that it doesn't matter where I go, the extent that I go, I'll still be able to locate home and come back to <laughs> this particular place. I'm trying to, just uh, an imagination, I'm okay. trying to so think for about. Me, for uh, me, I was thinking, yeah. um, well, because of the incident that happened earlier, which was the Noah's, um, the flood, mm -hmm. maybe it was fear of the unknown. Fear that maybe you sh should God bring back the flood, mm -hmm. then they they'll might climb have, up the tower. They'll climb up the tower and probably um, we'll we'll be able to be from, or yeah. preserve from uh, the tragedy. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it was the fear of the unknown, and they didn't want to imagine that if the flood comes back, mm -hmm. then where will they be? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's interesting. <laughs> sometimes we we limit God to our own 
you know, yeah, to our own level. And I think God is trying to come back to, uh, to, to uh, what do, how do they say it? Uh, he's trying to come to our level. Yes. Like in verse 5, I think the best explanation would be maybe God is trying to make us understand mm -hmm. that uh, le le let's go down to them mm. so that they can... Uh, they, they, you know, they, there is no way we would understand as human beings mm -hmm. how, where God was. Mm -hmm. God was ready to reason with them. Yeah, he was ready to <laughs> reason with them, actually. Yes. Yeah, so I think God is trying always to come down mm -hmm. to, to our level to our of level. understanding, yeah. people with the finite mind, mm -hmm. just to, so that we can understand his purposes in our lives. Mm -hmm. Maybe up to that, that point, if I may just bring in... Okay, uh, my director is telling me that we take a breakfast, mm -hmm. uh, but of course we'll continue with this discussion as we summarize on that particular event and then mm -hmm. move on. I see there is a lot of genealogy coming on mm -hmm. and uh, now we are getting into somebody mm -hmm. whom we've always wanted to associate ourselves with mm -hmm. and uh, of course we'll be getting to learn that uh, more about that after this short break. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Welcome back, our uh, dear viewer. Remember, the show is The Bible Journey. And of course, our social media platforms are open for your comments and questions. On Facebook, I've always said it's Hope Channel Kenya. And on Twitter, at Hope underscore Kenya. You can also get me personally at Nick Ratemo. And we were talking about Genesis chapter 11. And uh, here we have God confounding the, the languages. And maybe the question that was asking you, Reru, as we went, went for a short break is, uh, yes. what is your general uh, view of what we are talking about from, gen uh, from verse 1 to verse 9? Verse, verse 1 to verse 9 in yes. Genesis 11. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the chapter itself begins with uh, the talk of the language and uh, when it uh, ends, it, uh, it, it is ending. Okay, we'll get there. We'll get mm -hmm. to there. It's still in verse 9. Uh, importance of language. God as the good administrator of this planet Earth knows the importance of the language. We can refer back when we shall get to Daniel. Uh, we'll see the Hebrew boys are in chapter 1, and uh, we find there a king, an earthly king, knowing the importance of language called uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. uh, for him to have people of, of in his kingdom who are of another kingdom, he actually changed their language so that they become one with him. So when God uh, realized that uh, these people were about to use language not to serve him but to go against his will, he actually came down in verse 5, it was, but the Lord came down to the city because there was a problem here. Here are people who have been given this gift of language and yet they want to use it contrary to what um, God had intended this language to, uh, to be used for. And uh, we're actually seeing that uh, in the gift of, of the Holy Spirit, there's mm -hmm. actually the gift of speaking in tongues. And when you speak in tongues, it's, uh, it's supposed to be uh, speaking a language which if I'm Luo, I can hear, if I'm Kikuyu, I can hear. Mm -hmm. It's actually one language. So he'll restore back uh, this language yeah, which yeah, we initially yeah. had. But language is important in administration. Sure, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. And Ongaro, you had something on, 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 on the previous verse 4. Yeah, actually, verse 4, mm -hmm. when you say that, and, uh, and they said, go to let us build as a city and a tower a city these people could stay together and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven so this tower the purpose was to reach in heaven now I, i'm much interesting in what comes later and let us make us a name they wanted to make a name for themselves mm -hmm. and later lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth so in it it dawned to me that in everything that we do there is a reason like these people had a reason why they were making a city and making a tower. 
a city so that they be not scattered, a tower that they may reach in heaven. And perhaps our brother had a reason why perhaps they were building this tower mm. to reach in heaven. Mm. Why could this tower just reach anywhere? Mm. Just just their, their intention was just to reach in heaven. Mm. Why? What mm. was the reason? Perhaps mm. he has yeah. a verse yeah. Yeah. Uh, to support um, this. Yeah, I'm yeah. impressed okay. to um, read the um, Genesis chapter 9, verse 11, mm -hmm. yeah. where yeah, we, we see them. Genesis. Genesis, mm -hmm. uh, we, co we just go back a page um, yeah. earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll see um, in verse 11, it says, uh, And I will establish the covenant with you, neither shall all flesh cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. So God promised um, his children that he's not going to cut them off. He's not going to bring that flood anymore. Mm -hmm. But um, if you come um, in, in verse 11, we see something very different. We see that um, these people wanted to build this tower so that there is no scattering mm -hmm. anymore. They wanted, they were thinking, they were trying to think ahead of God. Okay? They were trying to, they were trying to imagine what if it happens the not goes uh, what go, what will happen so they are trying to come up with a solution of a problem that was not there uh, are you saying that uh, we we get get into problems because we don't understand the will of god and maybe we try to solve problems when we, we actually forget there is a god uh, a god who cares about us and he can actually solve all our problems briefly if we surrender our will to the lord and you accept him to help you solve any problem or even any potential danger or even any anxiety, then I don't think we, it is proper for us to just go ahead of him. Yeah. Yeah, because he's the person who should be our focal point. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then just uh, before oh, okay. Pastor, yeah. uh, I was also thinking on the same line, you see in verse 8, God is addressing his sons, the, 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 the Noah and his sons, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. will no more destroy the, the earth with the flood. Now, could it be that these people wanted to build this tower too tall, that if another flood comes, they will take the refuge there? <laughs> but they are doubting God. God has talked to them. No so there's a point of sand. doubt. <laughs> I will not. And when you see the rainbow in verse 11, mm -hmm. I do set my bow in the cloud that when I see it, I will remember. God is saying that when I see it, I will remember. And I will not bring this again. But they went on and doubted this. Uh, yeah, so do we doubt, doubt God that is coming again? Yeah, yeah, we still doubt. We can relate it to right now. Mm. People actually doubt. Yeah, we still yeah. doubt. No. I think we have a lot of doubt mm. in this generation that <laughs> even that time, I don't know. Pastor? I'm trying to read the minds of these people and I'm trying to see them say, hey, God is capable of bringing this flood again. The best way we can do is let's build up a very tall tower and uh, make sure that even though the floods come, we will be in the top most and God will not be able to. They are trying to limit God in the sense that, well, let us outdo mm. God's wits. Mm. And they forgot that actually they are creatures mm -hmm. and God is a creator. Mm. His ways are not our ways, they are way beyond. Yeah. And by doing this, they forget. I think it's the psalmist ought to have been here to remind them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because the psalmist says, even if I go to the deepest, God, you're there. You're there. Mm -hmm. Even if I go to the highest, mm -hmm. you're there. So that then they can't really run away from God. Mm -hmm. Just as like my brethren are saying here, you can't bring solutions to a problem that you've imagined, except it be that God himself can take you out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's and just, and just uh, you, like you're saying, even if I go to the deep the of the deepest, yes. like Jonah, you remember he tried oh, yes. to <laughs> run away from God, oh, yes. but what happened to him? Oh, yes. He still went to Nineveh, oh, where yes. God had sent him. Yes. So we may try to hide, but God is still there, exactly. he's watching us. Mm -hmm. But verse 6 again, Pastor, maybe I, I should uh, still ask this question for the sake of many. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now, not this one, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Was God fearing something oh, people from have humanity? Said that. People have said that again and again, <laughs> that uh, unity is powerful until God fears this unity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he was people saying, have accused hey, God of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, not, not in that sense. Mm -hmm. 
God actually sees ahead of them and he realizes yes they were to make a tower yes but what were to be the dangers of that mm. is what God is looking at mm. what was to be the result of this God was still looking at that what was the motive of why these people were doing this so God God is not at all trying to compete if he could be able to bring a flood to eradicate the whole human race previously how much more just a single tower in one particular place? You would uproot it. Mm. <laughs> Not even uprooting it, just one little shaking and yeah. there it goes, tumbling <laughs> yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so mm. th that could have easily been done by God, just by a mayor pushing it by a wind. But it realizes that no, that's not what I would wish to do now. I had given a promise earlier, which Brother Roland mm -hmm. has actually read clearly mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And I'll have to keep to that promise. Mm -hmm. But that these people may not go ahead you know, and now bring in an evil again amongst themselves. Mm. Let me help them by confusing their language. Mm. In, a, in other words, actually try God, God did bring, did bring um, a help mm. of confusing their language mm -hmm. for their good that they may now scatter apart, scatter apart yeah. and that they may not have the evil that could have generated. Mm. Something closely connected to that uh, from verse 10. We have the generations of Shem, yes. and uh, as you read through these generations of Shem, you come to realize there is a reduction in humans' lifespan. Oh yes, yeah, Th there is something like that. And and when you go back to chapter six, we noted that the Lord said, "My spirit shall not always be at war with these mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. I will; they shall live this number of years." Mm -hmm. Death also. I've heard this being mentioned mm -hmm. that was also for, for the blessing of man, mm -hmm. that man should die at an earlier age, not live to uh, 900 years and all that. Evil. Uh, yeah, of, of fears, you know, troublesome years and, uh, you know, all this evil in the world. Is that also a blessing, Pastor? God didn't actually reduce the years, but the evil we engaged ourselves in as a human race helped in reducing our years but he said he said it he oh, yes. mentioned it yes yes it did if you could read it again yeah um, chapter six yes chapter six verse three verse three yes it says yeah? mm -hmm. and the lord said my spirit shall not always strive mm -hmm. with man mm -hmm. for that he also is flesh yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years you realize that so he's, he's not saying i will reduce mm -hmm. but man's days will be it's One. like he has uh, given a command, his years shall be 120, and therefore the clerk takes the notes and they reduce the, the years to 120 years. When you come to realize what happens uh -huh. after the flood and continuing, mm. there are many things that take place that actually reduce the, the age sure, sure. of mm. uh, the, the human, uh, the, Life. the human Life. lifespan. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that then, if we say God meant that human life has to reach one, 120 at that time, why is it that others died at 40, others at 30? Why didn't they reach 120, which God had said? And is God partial that he allowed others to reach 900 and some are reaching 30, 40, and they are dying? No. Mm -hmm. But there is something that is happening, and God is only trying to make, up a, make a statement here that, hey, with what humanity is doing, mm -hmm. it is actually affecting him in that at the end of the day, his days will be. Later on, you'll find the scriptures also saying, the days of man are 70. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's, um, Psalms, Psalms, 90, Psalms, Psalms, 90. Psalms 90 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can help in reading. Yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah. It says the days of our years are three score years mm -hmm. and ten. Mm -hmm. And if by reason of strength they be four scores mm -hmm. years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, mm -hmm. for it soon cut off and we fly away. Mm -hmm. So you realize again, so ask how many that's years? not the making so he, uh, is, is 20. 20. 20. Yes. So three scores so three and scores 60, 60, which are 10 to 70. Yeah. 70. 70. Uh -huh. so, so you realize this is not the making of God, mm. but of man in the evil that he is engaged in. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that is what's keeping in, reducing his what? Mm -hmm. Life, mm -hmm. Lifespan. Mm -hmm. And if it were that God didn't have mercy on us, I think this lifespan may reduce to zero itself. Mm. But God will not allow that. 
In fact, he's preparing a generation that he will restore back mm. to live eternally as he had mm. yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe on the genealogy, before mm. we go to quite an interesting segment as, as we finish down there, uh, anything on, on the genealogy that we not hear, Eric? Yeah, perhaps just to say about that, I will give a retake. Mm -hmm. on uh, on the question that you said that is God uh, fearing the unity of men. Mm -hmm. I would mm -hmm. say that God loves men to be united. Quick, in the book of John, chapter 17, mm -hmm. Christ, the prayer of Christ. Eh? Yes, the prayer of Christ to his disciples as he's living, mm -hmm. ascending to heaven. Verse 21, <coughs> the Bible says, mm -hmm. uh, brother, you can read it. John. Are you there? John 18, verse 17, verse 21. Maybe I'm there and yes. read it. Just that read they it. all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in you, in thee, that they also may be one in us, mm -hmm. that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Mm. Yes, God, God desires unity. Desires unity, that the whole world may believe that God sent Christ that to be united mm -hmm. in worshiping the Lord. Not just un united in doing any other thing, mm -hmm. but to worshiping the Lord. Yeah. And uh, again, just to take again mm -hmm. what the question that Pastor was actually tackling mm -hmm. about the, the ears of, of, of men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the book of Psalms, this is Psalms 34, where the, the psalm says that, Oh, teach me to number my days, mm -hmm. that I may apply wisdom unto it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so th the key thing is not to know about the, the years that men do live. Mm -hmm. Like in Kenya, we have life expectancy. What we expect, you live the highest. That will not help us enough. But can we ask God to help us number our days, that we may apply wisdom to it, and how we, we live here on earth? Mm -hmm. Back to genealogy. Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, Genesis, we still chapter 11. Yes. Uh, more interesting from verse 11, going down up to verse 27. We have uh, uh, Noah had three sons. Shem was one of them. Verse 11 gives us Shem. And who had a son called Hafax. Of course, Noah, uh, Shem also lived other years. Mm -hmm. and the head sons and daughters, the Bible says so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shem lived for 600 years mm -hmm. and then he died. The son who was a uh, half lived for 438 years, who also gave birth to uh, Salah and who li also lived 433 years. The point as you read all down, years are actually decreasing sure. mm -hmm. up to the point where we have uh, the uh, Naho who lived 148 and gave birth to Terah. Mm -hmm. And Terah lived for 200 and, uh, zero, uh, 205 years and had three sons mm -hmm. that we stop in verse 27. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So clearly, we can see that years were actually reducing. Mm -hmm. And also, sin were actually coming into this earth more and more. Yeah. What is the implication of this or the application of this to ourselves we live now? Mm -hmm. Look at our grandparents, the years they, they took. Look at our, our fathers, the year they took and our years in this age. They can be a uh, variety, they, they vary, they can vary. Mm -hmm. But a clear fact that you can't deny mm -hmm. is that years are reducing mm -hmm. because of sin. Yeah. Um, I'd like to also um, add on what my brother said. Yes. Um, there's a particular scene that I'm seeing here. Okay? And this is quite related to what the um, the fathers of Abraham used to believe in. Yeah? Let's turn to Joshua chapter 24, verse 2. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Joshua 24, 24 verse mm -hmm. 2. And before I turn to it, I just want to mention uh, something. Just mm -hmm. like um, uh, 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 if you go to, I mean, if you, I'll just read it. Eh? Genesis chapter 11 verse 22 says, And Serag lived 30 years and begat Naho. So we see something in Naho and um, Terah. But um, just to mention um, Joshua chapter 24 verse 2, mm -hmm. it says, And Joshua said unto all people, Thus said the Lord of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in all time. Even Terah, not even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Necker, and they, they served other, other gods. gods. Okay? There's an interesting bit that I see here, that these people did not believe in the Lord. That God that you're seeing is a God that's small g. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So despite that Abraham came from this family, he believed. 
and by faith he walked with God. And that is how God was able to pick him from that group. And, and I think it's also crucial that we see how Abraham comes about. Yeah. Be, be, because uh, from verse 22, 22 says, And Serag lived 30 years and begat Nahor. Mm -hmm. And Serag, uh, Serag lived after he begat Nahor 200 years and mm -hmm. begat sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. So we have Serag, then we have Nahor. Mm -hmm. Then, and Nahor lived nine uh, nine, nine and, and twenty, 20 years, years, that is twenty nine, and yeah. begat Terah. Mm -hmm. And Nahor lived after he begat Terah mm -hmm. an hundred and nineteen years, mm -hmm. and begat sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, so it's uh, Serag, Nahor, after Nahor, Terah. we have Terah. Yes. And Terah lived seventy years, and begat Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Haran. Mm -hmm. And these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abraham, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran beget Lot. So there, mm -hmm. there is now another lineage from yes. from uh, 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 the, the Haran, uh, not Haran, the, the father of, uh, that is Terah. Terah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, we have the lineage of Abraham coming in, because mm -hmm. at this point, we are getting the point of discussing about Abraham, mm -hmm. the father of all nations, mm -hmm. the father of faith. Mm -hmm. So the, I think this would come crucial as we continue mm -hmm. with the discussion uh, below here. Yeah. And maybe as we go to now the lineage of Abraham, mm -hmm. as we, we get to be introduced to about this father of faith, Abraham, mm -hmm. what would you say here as we come to the conclusion, Rev? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, in in my view, I'm um, looking at this, and uh, it, it it is looking like a tree. Actually, we, we normally call them tree tree mm. tree diagrams for for families. Yeah. It is coming on to the point of faithfulness. This is a tree. We are looking at that branch which has fruits, and uh, branch which has fruits, we come down to Abraham. So it is a list of faithfulness. You know, there are people who have been mentioned, but after they are mentioned, they are disappearing from the line, mm -hmm. slowly by slowly. So it is like a listing of faithfulness. God showing us that who is faithful and those who are not faithful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as your name comes, will it stay or will it uh, be left out? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and then go God is uh, quite intentionally showing us, mm -hmm. leading us to a particular path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, Of course the intention here, as Moses writes this book, I think he's uh, telling us, guiding us into understanding mm -hmm. that we are going to talk about Abraham, mm -hmm. but from Abraham, this mm -hmm. is how he comes about. Exactly. This is the lineage mm -hmm. yeah. that how do we get to this Abraham? He was a son of so and so, a son of so and so, up to the la the first person as we go back to the sons of uh, of uh, Noah. That's yeah. what I want to add. That's what I, want, I wanted actually to pick it up. That mm. that you know he has rightly put it the mm. tree mm -hmm. as it were that dry diagram, mm -hmm. and it's very possible that God could have allowed Moses to write everything about everyone on this tree. Mm -hmm. Just like we are seeing here, there's Peleg, there is uh, Ryu, there is mm -hmm. Serag. Mm -hmm. It's very po because they also had their own stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But God allows Moses to leave that aside mm -hmm. and limit it to only Terah, yeah. who mm -hmm. brings us to Abraham. Mm -hmm. And Abraham now introduces something different. So there's a transition mm -hmm. that we are seeing. You see, the Bible is a record of the plan of salvation for humanity mm. yeah. and it doesn't bring the record of everything that has happened mm. in the yeah. face of the earth no. mm. if it were to do so then we could have had problems <laughs> that is why this genealogy comes into the picture mm. and if i were to be a little bit of a scholar too mm -hmm. i would say that this genealogy here uh, was put just so we can introduce the man abraham sure mm. sure and so that abraham can now bring the aspect of the salvation, that faith part, mm -hmm. which leads into the continuation of the plan of salvation of God for the human race, mm -hmm. of those that were faithful and continued. You see, there's a book that I, I like reading called uh, uh, Acts of the Apostles. Mm -hmm. um, it says, from one of my favorite authors, he says that in every generation, God has had a, fa God has had a faithful people who have continued to send forth the sentinels of truth. Mm -hmm. and so. Abraham here is being put into the picture in the continuation of 
the plan of God in sending forth the sentinels of truth. Mm. That is why this geo genealogy is right here. Mm. And maybe later on in the programs that will come, we will see now how Abraham continues in that plan of God. He has mm -hmm. read to us from Joshua, mm. where you realize this, these were people that had actually lived a heathen life. Mm. Yeah. But from that he has seen a man because God sees ahead. Mm. He sees a man who will be. And that's why sometimes yeah, in the scripture you'll find it says that, for I know mm -hmm. that Abraham shall command his children. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. And so since he has read and seen that Abraham comes into the picture, he sees now Abraham is brought into the picture to continue mm -hmm. God's plan. And we shall come to that in chapter 12 so that I don't preempt it. Wow, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and I think uh, just because of time, mm -hmm. uh, today we won't really be able to summarize on this particular chapter because I see there is, there is quite a lot also from verse 27 up to 32 mm -hmm. that we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. Maybe in our next discussion, before we pick it up, we'll mm -hmm. have to have a recap sure. and mm -hmm. uh, just get in a few mm -hmm. points from mm -hmm. this particular area. Mm -hmm. But maybe as we just uh, maybe in, in a statement each, mm -hmm. maybe Rodin. 30 seconds mm -hmm. uh, from Rodin, <laughs> what would you say? Um, I, I, allow me not to take 30 seconds, but um, just for the sake of um, adding in to what Pastor said, mm -hmm. it reminded me, um, I'm just looking at the Bible, if the plan of salvation is here, um, later on we see Jesus coming into the picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And when you look at um, the story of um, um, the genealogy, and we see Asaphad coming from Shem, mm -hmm. then we also see a confirmation to that in Luke chapter 3, verse 34 and 36. Eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in Luke 34, let me just... Um, mm -hmm. Maybe if you can just paraphrase for us. Yeah, to generally we are seeing, mm -hmm. we are seeing the children, and you see a, a generation of almost 10 people coming after um, coming before Abraham, mm -hmm. then Abraham comes in, then we see again other um, people coming in, then we see Jesus. Mm -hmm. So even Abraham plays a very key role into becoming the father of nations. Wow, wow. Yeah, thank and it's you. something that you'll see even as we go to the next um, coming chapters. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. Ongaro, yeah, your I last will, statement. I will, I will just say that uh, God is not ignorant to put all this. And as we read all this story in the book of Genesis 11, uh, we don't just say that this was theirs. We also have our portion. These people know the right thing to do, mm -hmm. like we do know. Mm -hmm. But they didn't put it into practice, in the power of God. Same to us, when we fail, we will also fail like they did. Wow, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So i uh, just like to say that it is very important how we live because we are looking at people who are mentioning, uh, who, are, who are being mentioned and uh, in their mention they also get to add others and to, and to, and to, and to their mention. Mm -hmm. So that you mention Terah, you know Abraham, you know Abraham, you know Isaac, you know Abraham, you also know Lord also. So in our mention we will get other mentions also. So it's important how we live because it affects others. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Finally, first, mm -hmm. let me read one text mm -hmm. from the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3. Zephaniah. Uh, verse 9. Chapter what? Chapter 3. 3. three. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the verse? Verse 9. Okay. The Bible records, mm -hmm. In that time, I will restore to the people a pure language, that they may all call on me, the Lord, in one, and they shall serve me with one accord. Amen. There is a promise in the scriptures mm. where in the destruction, final destruction of humanity, mm. God still says that that which was in the beginning, mm. I shall restore. And what is that? The language, the language. of man. Wow. And he says wow. it here that I shall restore it, the mm. pure language. And I think that's where I want to leave our viewers, mm. that someday all this destruction that we see, all these things that come out of ethnicity and language is going to end and Christ will restore unto us the pure language of heaven. Well, I'm waiting well, to see what that language is. I'm also be. waiting. <laughs> I, I guess uh, nothing else will be ever good. your language. <laughs> 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 that heavenly language? Yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much. I really want to appreciate all of us for coming. Of thank course, you. our resident pastor, Pastor Gerald Nyarega there, uh, mm -hmm. Brother Roland Migok, mm -hmm. thank you very much for mm -hmm. coming. Eric Ongaro and mm -hmm. George Reru, thank you very much for coming on board to help us in this analysis. And of course, our viewer, mm -hmm. up to that point, we come to the end of our discussion for 
today. Next time, join us also as we continue this discussion. We'll be moving on, of course, starting with the verse 27, moving on to Genesis chapter 12 to understand more now about Abraham. I hope that you'll be joining us. Our social media platforms are also open for your comments and questions. That is on Facebook, Hope Channel Kenya is our page, and on Twitter, our handle is at hope underscore Kenya. Mm -hmm. Finally, uh, I'll request George Redu to lead us in our prayer. Okay, let's pray. A loving and living master, a good and a father in heaven, come before your presence. Thank you for this discussion, everyone. As we go on with the journey in the Bible, Lord, on the Bible journey, we pray that you may continue abiding with us. Help us learn from your word. Thank you for the word and everything that you put in it. This we humbly ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much and thank you very much for being with us. Mm.